mighty God we serve. Oh, yes, 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 yes. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory. Can't talk enough about it. Yes. Amen. And God knows when you think on it. Uh -huh. Ooh, glory. He just gives you a, a conversation in your spirit. That's right. And you just sit there talking, more Lord, more yes. Lord, more oh, Lord. Because yeah. he just speaking and letting you know that he loves you. Right. Letting you know that he cares. I couldn't dance enough. Uh -huh. Amen. To dance enough of the praise that's going on on the inside. Yes. Amen. There's something welling up in my spirit yes. Yes. that lets me know that this is all that you have believed for yes. um, God and I'm more than able to yes. bring it yes. to pass. Oh, yes. I'm so glad God just don't drag you along and fish you along. I'm so glad that God says what he says and mean what he says. Yes. That's the kind of God we serve. Oh, yes. A mighty God. Oh, yes. And if God said I'm going to keep you, he's going to keep you. If God said I'm going to bless you, God knows he can bless you. Yes. What a mighty God yes, yes. we serve. Mighty. Glory, yeah. glory, yeah. glory. Oh, yes. Lord, he's worthy of a hand wave. He's worthy of a praise. He's worthy of a hallelujah. He's worthy of a thank you, Jesus. You, you ever be laying in bed in the middle of the night and the Lord speaking to your spirit and just, just come out of it, thank you, Jesus. I've been around people who, you know, who don't, never have a nice thing to say. And I'm standing there sometimes and I'm saying, Lord, I thank you that you've been good to me. I thank you. And then sometimes i got to correct them and say, you know, no, I'm sorry. God's been good to me. That's right. That's right. He don't never do another thing. He's still God. He's still God. He don't need me. Amen. To justify who he is. Or either to give him credibility. He's God all by himself. I'm glad, but yet he called us who were nothing and made us something That's in right. him. That's right. Glory, glory, glory. Yes. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. Yes. Glory. Thank God for the praise. Amen. Thank God for the fellowship. Thank God for the anointing yes. that destroys the yoke. Yes. Folk would always talk about the anointing that destroys the yoke. Yes. But see, I've been many, many places and many, many times you don't sense yes. It's not a feeling, but it's a sensing. Yes, but yes. you don't sense an anointing present that will do anything. Yes. But when you sense an anointing, yes. you know that the sky is the limit yes. to what God is able and will do yes. on your behalf. God just, just energizes your belief yes. and causes you to believe beyond what you in yourself are incapable yes. of believing. Yes. Amen. That's when you said, if you can believe the impossible, Mm -hmm. He can bring it glory, to pass. Yes. Glory, glory. That crazy stuff. That stuff you're afraid to tell anybody but God. Yes, and God is still able yes, to make it happen. Yes, Thank God for Jesus. Yes. I know what the doctors said. Mm -hmm. I know what the prognosis said. You even read the x-ray. You even read the report. But God said it ain't so until I said it's so. It ain't over until God says it's over. I know they said no more, don't call, don't bother me. But it ain't over until God says it's over. Amen. He's still sovereign. He's still in charge. Glory, glory, glory. If you have your Bibles handy, bless the Lord. I'm going to ask you to turn to Romans the 8th chapter. The first through the 15th verse. Amen. First through the 15th verse. Romans is Paul's treatise on the law and on man's ability, or should I say God's ability to bring man to a place of righteousness in him. Amen. The apostle Paul was a scholar, he was a genius, mm -hmm. and God used him mightily to communicate to us by the Holy Spirit what God meant about being lost as well as being saved 
as being justified as well as being kept as being blessed, as being in a right relationship with God. God used the book of Romans to declare the law, to declare grace, and to declare that the two of them, amen, as God would use one, one was a, 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 a one would cut off and the other one would take over, and then God kind of let us know that the grace of God is able to afford us all that we need. What the law couldn't do, yeah. grace did, amen. amen. What the law pointed out, grace upheld and, and, and gave us and gave us the ability to please God, even though we ourselves were unpleasing. I thank God for his word. I thank God for the the, the truth of God's word. Uh, I'm just going to read Romans 8 because I am going to go through the text. Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. If I might use for a word this morning, it would be choosing to walk. Choosing to walk. God, by his mighty power, has determined for us before the foundation of the world those things, those needs, those um, uh, additions in our life and those things in our life that would cause us to be in a, 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 a maturity, a relationship with God that apart from them we would never have. God has determined before the foundation of the world that we would walk in harmony and walk in peace. And the bottom line is, is that because of Jesus Christ, we have a right relationship with God. Because of Jesus, we are able to understand, perceive, discern, as well as receive what God has for us. I'm so glad that Jesus died and rose again. Yes, Had he not done that, you and I would be yet in our sins. Right. And really what that means is we would have no hope and we would be hopeless and without help. Because the wages of sin is still death. Yes, right. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through his son, yes, Jesus Christ. Yes, Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is still death. Yes. So God says, because I sent my son so that you might have a relationship with me. Now, as opposed to sin, I can walk in the strength of God's character, which yes. is his righteousness. And be pleasing yes, to him. Yes. See, I can't make myself pleasing. It's only by faith as I accept the finished work of Jesus Christ am I made likable, if you will, or should I say made acceptable in the face and in the person of Jesus Christ. Yeah. If I could have done it myself, I would have. That's right. If I could have made it happen, I would have. But God had to send his son. The Bible says in the likeness of sinful flesh so that me in sin would be able to be delivered from that which was killing me. That's why I don't understand why everybody ain't saved. Because it has to be the blindness because if you knew better and you saw you could do better, you would reach out to do better because if Christ can give you the power to choose yeah. and give you the power to say yes as well as no, you would reach up and say, Lord, like Peter, save me. Yes. Save me. Yes. Save me. So when God gives you an illumination to see the light as opposed to the darkness of the matter, then it is your pri priority as well as your privilege to say, Lord, save me. Yes. 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 Save me. Set me free. Yes, Set me free. And that's what Jesus brought to us yes, as a result of his finished work. That's why the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation yes. to them which are in not yourself, not the church, because you can be in the church and not be in Christ Jesus. You can be in a building and not be in Christ Jesus. You can go through all the rituals, all the rites, know everybody, be, be welcome, be favored, be familiar, and still not be in Christ Jesus. But it says there is therefore now no condemnation which them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So he does give us 
the strength to obey his word. Glory. So we might talk this morning, we're just going to talk about choosing to walk. Because walking is a choice. Choosing to walk. God has determined in his word that we would all be brought to a place of growth. Brought to a place of fruition. In other words, God didn't save you not to bring forth fruit. God didn't save you not for you to be productive. God didn't save you not for something to come to pass as a result of your relationship with him. Now, it's not money, it's not title, it's not a position, but rather God says, listen, whatever it is uh -huh. that I'm determined to bring out in you yeah. will only come as a result of you choosing to walk. That's right. Choosing to walk. Yeah. It's a choice, choosing to walk. Oh, yeah. Choosing to walk. Choosing to walk as I walk. Choosing to do as I've done. Why? Because I'm God and I don't make a mistake. You know you can't make a mistake following God. Right. Huh? You may make a mistake, but he never makes a mistake. Yeah. But as I follow him in faith believing, God is able to transform my life and change it to the perfection that he has purposed before the foundation of the world. God seen me right when I was wrong. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me say that again. God seen me right before the foundation of the world when I was wrong yes, and said there's going to come a season there's going to come a time that you're going to be like me I'm going to change you into my image by my glory right. and in order for the glory in order for the image in order for the change I got to choose to walk I got to have like the old folks say a made up mind right. mm-hmm See, because a lot of times folk got saved and then their mind wasn't made. They got delivered from their mess, but was still determined to go back to the mess as opposed to having their mind made up to serve Christ. Right. We used to teach that in the church years ago that if all you do is get saved, just get saved, get saved, get saved, get saved. What I found out was that you can get saved and still walk in disobedience. Right. You can get saved and still act crazy like you're not saved. That's right. That's right. It's a choice. That's right. And God gives you the power. See, God don't want no robots. Rather, he wants willing vessels. And he says, if I save you and snatch you out of the pit and the jaws of hell, uh -huh. he said, I did that as your savior. Now I want you to choose to walk with me as your Lord. Right. That's right. That's right. See, I believe this, a backslider is one who has been saved, but now rejects the very deliverance that delivered him and is continually walking with a mind to do what he did that didn't please God, what which God delivered him from. Right. In other words, he's walking forward, but looking backwards. All right. Amen. All right. Choosing to walk. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. I wish I could pour it on you and say, okay, now you're righteous. It don't work like that. Amen. Amen. It don't work. It's a walk. It's a growth. Amen. If you take a child Amen. Amen. and look at them as children, if they never walked, they would be lame. That's right. They would never be, they, they'd be in a crib till they were 50 mm -hmm. because they never had an opportunity to walk, even though they were human beings like everybody else. Even though they had a heartbeat, a mind, a brain, limbs, and everything else, they still weren't able to walk because they never chose to walk or never put in a place to walk. And Christ says, listen, I saved you, but I didn't save you not to walk. I saved you so that you would walk after me. Mm, mm. Follow me. Respond to me. Obey me. Amen. That's why a lot of times as a believer, when you first get saved, you say, man. This is great. But what I found out was I, for the first time in my life, I had an opportunity to say no to wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. I had an opportunity to say no to wrong. Whereas before, I went with the wind. If the wind went that way, that's the way I went. Amen. Amen. If they did it, I did it. Amen. If I felt like doing it, I did it. Mm -hmm. If I didn't feel like it, I didn't. But the point of it is that I was moved by my emotions. I was moved by my, 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 my instinct to do what I wanted to do apart from God. But when Christ came into my life, I recognized something. Now I had an opportunity to say no to the things that were trying to drive me contrary to what God wanted me to do. 
And as I read his word, and the Spirit of God again motivated me to read, because really, when I first started reading the Bible before I got saved, it was like reading another language. That's right. And then when he came into my life, he opened up my eyes, and I was able to see the truth that the Bible was representing to me, but he represented it to me in the person of the Holy Spirit. And so now I had some comprehension to understand. You ever work on a math problem and can't understand it? And then you got to get comprehension. And once you get comprehension, you understand it. It was the same way with the Bible. Once I, when I first saw the Bible, it was like a difficult math problem. I didn't understand it. Didn't know where it started. Didn't know where it began. But then when Christ came into my life, he gave me the illumination to figure out what the end would be. Yeah. Glory, glory. Choosing to walk into choice. God not only plans, not only in the natural, to finish what he started, but in the spiritual, he plans to finish what he started. Amen. Amen. First John, uh, St. John 15 and 1 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband of me. Every branch, husband, and every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So God says, listen. I'm the, my, I, I, you know, I'm the vine, my father's the husbandman. He said, we take, just like a farmer takes a vine or takes a plant and nurtures it, God said, I nurture it for the point to bring about fruit. And for that reason, God also says to us, when we choose to walk, God is in the business of bringing forth fruit or bringing to completion what he has started. Amen. Glory, glory. The walking, I said before to you, is a choice. Look at Romans 8 and 1. It says, listen, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's one of the keys. You got, when you read Scripture, you've got to read it as, it's, as it is stated so that you understand the context to which it's stated. It says, in Christ Jesus have made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, they were given commandments and ordinances, but they, within themselves, within their flesh, within their mortal bodies, they could not keep them. God said, do the Ten Commandments, they broke every one of them. <laughs> Why would God give us a commandment we couldn't keep? Come on. Yeah. Why? Because God had to establish some order. Because otherwise it'd be total disorder. Right. So God said, here's the standard. As long as you keep your eyes on me, you can uphold the standard that I require. Amen. And the problem was they didn't keep their eyes on him. Right. So along a little later in the scripture, God tells them, listen, I'm no longer going to trust the fact that I commanded you to do a thing. He said, I'm going to put my spirit in you. Yeah. He said, because if my spirit's in you, you got to do it. He said, if my spirit's in you, you at least have the power to obey me. Amen. Amen. He said, but if I just give it to you, lay it out there, you're not going to do it because you're in a battle. Your mortal body, your flesh will say, I want to do what I want to do. Right. How, many, how many can testify to that? I want to do what I want to do. I don't care what nobody says. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And a lot, it kills me. A lot of stuff didn't kill us. Yeah. Folk killed friends. They ain't here today. Because it killed me. I don't care. I don't care what the speed limit is. 55, I go 95. Yeah. <laughs> and then you read about them in the obituary. Yeah. Amen. Because the consequences of rebellion is rebellion. Amen. The con is, is, is death, if you will. Wait. Praise God. Praise God. Look at this now. He said, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Because Jesus was... Uh, born of a woman yet without sin it was not the, the seed of man but rather the seed of God mm -hmm. he walked around in humanity yet he was still God all God, all man so that we would have example and know that we have power in our spirit to take authority over our body Mm -hmm. And over our instincts and over our ambition, over our emotion, we have the power because the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death which is in my body. Amen. I can say no to hell, amen, and yes to heaven because God is in my body. Yeah. That's right. I don't drink anymore. I don't cuss anymore. 
I don't do all that. Don't chew. Don't go with them to do. You know, you're all that. Hang with them to do. But it's not because I can't. It's because I choose not to. Amen. Come on now. Amen. A lot of times we get to the point where we think that we're so holy or so churchy. I say holy because churchy, I don't even know what that means anymore. I used to thought I knew what it means. I don't know it anymore. But I'm going to say we're so holy as a result of our relationship with Jesus Christ that this world stuff don't matter. Understand this. Your flesh remembers. Yes, sir. Come on now. Let me play something out of Motown and you'll be thinking about somebody else. <laughs> Amen. And it's not that you're being unfaithful, it's just that your flesh remembers. Right. And it remembers the occasion when the song, when the mood, and God knows, don't dim the light. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, if you sit next to your husband, don't look at him because you might not be thinking about your husband. Anymore. Amen. Uh, uh, That's the flesh. You thinking about it, but your flesh ain't thinking about it. <laughs> Amen. But that's the, the death of the flesh. Yeah. That's why he tells us there's no good thing that dwells in the flesh. No. The flesh longs to satisfy itself. Yes. The flesh doesn't have a problem dying of its own choosing. Mm -hmm. If the flesh could kill itself, it would. Right. But the flesh don't have a problem taking you to the grave with it. That's right. so true. Amen. It envies itself, glory to God. Even with the mind of the spirit to do right, the flesh will say, listen, I know what God said, but this is what this looks like. And if you entertain this, you will have that regardless of what God said. So the flesh chooses to satisfy itself. That's why the Bible says the, the, the law of sin and death. Sin and death. Now look at this now. For they that are in the flesh, oh no, okay, let me go. Let me, oh yeah, they that are in the flesh, the fifth verse, do mind the things of the flesh that they are after. But they that are in, after the spirit, the things of the spirit, them that are of a fleshly mind, mind the things of the flesh. It's just like flesh on parade. It's just like if you had the mummers coming up a uh, 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 Belfield Avenue, then it'd be flesh on parade. Even though it's a parade, it just per likes to parade itself. That's why flesh wants to show off. Flesh wants to be seen. Flesh had, you know, Jesus didn't have no microphones, he didn't have no speakers, he didn't have nothing, no PA system, nothing to get his message across other than word of mouth. And yet they still would always get the story wrong as to his PR. They would always have some kind of lie or something that was contrary, but Jesus had all these things, no social media, and yet folks would try to make him a man of flesh. And then Jesus would put it right to him and say, listen, he that was without sin, he would always go back to the culprit, which was sin. In other words, if you lived right, amen, then this thing wouldn't be an issue. But you choose to live wrong, so the wrong is the issue. Jesus would always hit him right between the eyes. He said, ye are, he told him on one occasion, the children of Israel, even as a nation, he said, ye are of your father, the devil. Come on. Mm -hmm. He told them, he said, you are of your father. Now, that was an insult because they knew they were Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. And how can you tell us that we are of our father, the devil? And, of the devil? and then Jesus told him, listen, he said, before Abraham was, glory to God. I said, wait a minute, you're only 30 some years old? What do you mean you was around before him? <laughs> he left him a deep bang, bang. That's right. I think Jesus had church today with two people in it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he always went to the root of the problem. That's right. Choosing to walk. Yeah. Choosing to walk. Walking is a choice, beloved. Well, God is pleased when we choose right over wrong. It is the heart of our worship to please God. It's what God expects us to do because of the spirit that dwells within us. And look at this. The scripture even tells us what the consequences of a bad choice is or of bad choices. It says in the sixth verse of Romans 8 chapter, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
If I'm struggling and I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with depression, dealing with discouragement, dealing with everything contrary of life and peace, then I may be thinking wrong. In other words, I may be dwelling on my emotions and that instead of dwelling on the spirit of God that dwells in me. The word of God uh, bears witness to the spirit of God that is in me. So therefore, I, I, I got to do a transition. I got to do a shift in my spirit. And begin to then uh, to, to meditate and to draw upon those things that give life. Yeah. I can't hang with who I used to hang with. I can't do what I used to do and expect to have life and peace. He said, for the carnal mind is death. It's death. It's dying. It causes everything contrary to the will and the work of God in my life. Yeah. I know when bad is coming when you're doing bad. Amen. When you are caught up in what you know you ought not to be caught up with as a believer, then I know the consequences of it. It says the carnal mind is death. Yeah. Yeah. I can't expect to have a clear head when I choose to continually think wrong. I can't expect to have a clear mind when I choose to fill my mind with garbage 24-7. It don't work like that. Choosing to walk. It's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice. Years ago, they used to talk about the soap operas. Cut them off. God knows that we just got to cut everything off now, David. It's that bad. Amen. You got to make a choice. Do I want to watch this? Do I want to talk to this individual? Do I want to do this? Why? Because I don't want to, if you will, poison my spirit yeah. with stuff that is contrary. Amen. Why? Because it, it takes you a while to recover. Yeah. You know, when you hear some mess about somebody, when you hear some stuff that you didn't really ask to hear, but they volunteered it, it takes a while to kind of cleanse your spirit of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you say, Lord, I wish you hadn't said nothing. I always thought well of them. Now you you kind of throw something in the fire to cause me to think negative of them. And then you got to kind of, kind of, kind of, if you will, uh, 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 get with God, retreat to the Lord in order to, to cleanse your mind and your spirit. Amen. Amen. It's a walk. It's what I choose to do. Then there are those that are just like Lois Lane. They love information. Yeah. They love 411. They don't want 911 because they can't help you anyway. They want 411 so they can get down on the dirt on everybody. And the interesting part, if you're so uh, into everybody else's dirt, you got a lot of dirt around you too. Amen. 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 And, it, and it, it taints your spirit. It taints your spirit. It taints your spirit. He said, be carnal in mind. He said, why? Because the carnal mind is enmity. It's the consequences of choosing or making a bad choice. It's an enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. When you walk in your flesh, when you are, uh, are pleasing or do that which is pleasing to you and not God, it says it's an enmity of God, and God is, can't really uh, uh, manage that. Because if God could manage it, it'd be him managing what was spirit and not what was death. But God said, you have the choice. If you want me to handle your affairs, you've got to release your affairs to me. Amen. Have you ever gone to God and prayed and you really didn't give him the full deal? Of course he knew the full deal, but you didn't let it go. You thought you was hiding it. God said, listen, if you want me to manage it, if you want me to oversee it, you got to let it go. Yes, sir. You got to tell me the whole thing. I know it. Yeah. You're just trying to keep it. I mm -hmm. said, listen. He said, because I can't manage that which is death when you don't even acknowledge that it is. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That old saying, the wrong is two left feet. <laughs> Amen. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. When I walk in my flesh, yes, sir. when I walk in my self and do my thing, God is not pleased. Amen. Period. Amen. Period. Because he's already given me the law, which was the ordinances. Yes. And he's already given me the spirit of God, which gives me the directive so that I can fulfill what I couldn't fulfill in my own strength. And then I deny all that. I'm not pleasing to God. Okay. See, I can quench the spirit of God. I can act like God didn't say it and really know he did. Yeah. Tell me again, God. And he tells you again. You say, Lord, wet the fleece the third time. Amen. God, and I'll believe you. God said, listen, I, 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 I can't always.
always strive. He told Adam, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Not Adam, but he told uh, uh, Noah. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Man was so disobedient, Noah preached the same message for 120 years. Yeah. Told him it's going to rain. They had never seen rain before. God would water the earth by dew. And so they had never seen rain. So he was telling them about something they had never seen. But Noah, the preacher of righteousness, yeah. preached the same message. It's going to rain. And they refused to yield to the spirit of the word in the prophet Noah. And they all died except for Noah and his family and the beasts that were on it. Amen. Amen. God said, listen, my spirit won't always strive with that. I told now we have it, you know, we really have the upper hand as believers because in the church, or should I say the church age, we have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost yeah. that takes up residence in us and identifies us with God. Amen. Before God was a mystery. Oh yes, sir. But now he's a friend. He's intimate with us by his spirit. Amen. 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 Choosing to walk. Choosing to walk. It's a choice, beloved. It's a choice to walk. It's a choice. Jesus told him, listen, you can choose right or wrong. But he said, I've given you the choice to please me because really worship is what pleases God. Jesus told him in St. John 14, 20, 23, he answered, if a man love me, he will keep my commandment, keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Jesus said, if you love me, You'll keep what I've said. In other words, you will identify with my words. And if you act like I didn't say anything, that shows your lack of obedience. If you know what you know, and you know this is right, then God says you have no other choice if you want to love me or prove your love to me, but to obey what I've said. Amen. It's different if you don't know. See, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be examined for what we do know. And many of us know a lot, but haven't at, uh, obeyed God or surrendered to God according to what we know. But God says, if it's what you know, he says, if you love me, and you know my words and desire to keep my words, he said, listen, he said, my father and I will come and will dwell with you. That's the sign of obedience. That's the sign of faithfulness. That's the sign of him being with us and not only with us, but in us. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at this. Back to our text here, Romans 8 and 9. He says, listen, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now, he makes it clear that if the spirit of God dwells in you, he says, listen, he says, your walk or your relationship is now not governed or sovereign by the flesh. It is rather sovereign or governed by the spirit. Why? Because the spirit of God gives us victory over our flesh as we surrender our will to it. Yeah. As we surrender our will to God, we are made more and more strengthened or we are strengthened to be in, in the victory lane as opposed to being in the defeat lane. We're able to have the victory over our flesh because as we yield to Christ, our flesh is put to death. Amen. Come on now. Jesus was on the earth 33 years, 32 years. But in the process of his dying, he laid his body down. But yet he suffered his body to be tortured, to be whipped, to be brutalized, to show the submission of his flesh yes. to the will of his father. He, he, even though he laid it down, he would have never died had he not laid it down. He's God and he's sovereign. He can do what he pleased. Yeah. But as an example to us, he chose to lay it down. He chose to be abused. He chose to have humanity yeah. disdain him and hate him and whip him. So he allowed himself to be whipped so that his flesh could be put to death by his own accord. Yeah. And then on the third day, he rose again. He rose in life so that we could have victory, even though in our flesh, but walk in the fullness of his spirit. The only reason you have the spirit of God in you now is because God deposited it in you. You would have never had it uh, unless he deposited it in you. Any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. I remember being on my job and people would talk about different ministers who, who had a problem with the Holy Spirit. And it was an interesting and almost, I, I, I was almost at a loss. They would say, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? 
I said, well, the Holy Spirit is God. It's the third part of the Trinity. I know Trinity is not in the Bible, but it's the third person. It's God, God, who is body, soul, and spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's so simple. It's almost childlike. But understand this. If he did not dispatch his spirit, yeah. we would be yet in our sins yeah. because we couldn't keep the law on the one hand and we couldn't satisfy the, the, the righteousness of God on the other. So he sent the Spirit in us so that we could walk in newness of life. Yes. And when I know this, as a result of faith believing in Jesus Christ, that I'm able to walk in the strength of his purpose yes. and not mine. Yes. Glory to God. And say no to sin. No. Glory to God. Able, able, to, able to say no to this and shut this off and walk away from that. And yes to God and no to the world. Amen. I know it ain't nothing but God. Amen. Because you look back over your life, you had no problem doing wrong. Right. You don't have to teach kids to do wrong. Right. You got to teach them to do right. Yeah. And it ain't in them to do right. Right, right, because they come here doing wrong. Right. Amen. Amen. Born in sin and shaping in iniquity. That's not talking about an adult. Yeah. That's talking about birth in general. That's how they come here. Why? Because of our father Adam. We took on his likeness. Yes took on his nature. Yeah. And so God said, I got a I got a I got I got a remedy for that. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna send forth my son, born, born of the seed of a woman, and a woman doesn't have a seed. Mm -hmm. Amen. He shall be born of the seed of a woman. And God said, No, I gotta fix this. He said, I'm gonna grab me a virgin, which makes it impossible. Uh -huh. But I'm gonna grab me a virgin and deposit my seed. Yes, Glory to God. He said, that way, no flesh, no element, no world, no flesh, no devil can take this thing. This thing going to be perfect yeah. and righteous. Yeah. 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 Woo, mm. So when Jesus would walk, he walked in the authority of God. No man, he was yet God. Yes. Yeah. Amen. He could have spoke all of us out, yeah. but he spoke all of us in yeah. so that we would be the righteousness of God in him. Yeah. Glory to God. Mm. That's why I get the glad, glad. That's why the joy of the Lord, not the joy of Paul, or the joy of any of us, is our strength. The joy of the Lord yes. is my strength. Yes. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Choosing to walk, beloved. Choosing to walk. Look what it says here. Back to our text. But ye, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And so the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the spirit of Christ, he is none of, you, none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead, not physically dead. Amen. Not physically dead. In other words, you're not laying in the dirt or in the dust. Amen. But rather, your body is dead to the sensing, amen, of its own emotion or its own sensing because of the empowering of the Spirit of God that gives you victory over your choices. Right. Now you can choose when you couldn't choose before. Amen. When... Adam and Eve were given a choice. He said, you can have anything in the garden. But he said, that tree, you can't touch. That's mine. That's mine. <laughs> and the tree was the tree of, now, of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, listen, anything, <clears throat> anything in paradise, you can have. Yeah. He said, but that tree is mine because that tree represented all wisdom, all knowledge, and the ability to discern right and wrong. And God said, that's not your right to do. It's my right to do because I already told you what to do. So God said, just like this, let me bring it down to the earth here. He said, listen, I've given you my word so you know what's right to do. And I've given you my spirit which is deposited in you to have the power to do it. So if you believe me and trust my word, then I can bring to pass what I've purposed in my word. In other words, the determination of my word will be brought to pass. But the interesting part, when Satan entered the picture, even though they had God speaking to them audibly as well as through their senses, they recognized God. And the devil said, God's trying to keep you from something. And that's what the devil, the same trick, the same plan, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That tree looks good, it probably tastes good, and God knows if you touch it, you know it feels good. Uh, uh, same thing, hasn't changed. He hasn't changed his agenda. It's the same thing. 
And now Adam, as well as Eve, had a right to choose. God didn't make them robots. That's right. They had a right to choose. And they chose with communion, one with themselves. They conceded together or conspired together uh -huh. and agreed to go against the command of God. They were pure, they were honest, they were innocent. Mm -hmm. And yet, with God Almighty walking about in the cool of the day, yeah. they yet determined to choose wrong. Mm -hmm. Glory to God Ooh. instead of right. Yes, yes, yes. And the consequences of us, all humanity after Adam mm -hmm. was, was, was tainted with sin. Every child to be born will be born in sin. Mm. Why? Because now the relationship had been severed. Amen. Amen. No, no more was it innocence. That's right. Now it had been defiled. Yeah. No more was it obedience. Yeah. Now it was rebellion. That's why you rebel against God today. Mm. Amen. Even as a believer, you can, you can get hard-headed and get stubborn. That's because the old nature says, listen, it's my choice. And God says, listen, I've given you a choice and given you the strength to choose what's right. Yeah. And if you choose to continue to do wrong, that's why you can live a blessed, saved life or you can live a miserable, saved life. Right. Well, let me say that again. Mm -hmm. You can live a blessed one yeah. or a miserable one. Yeah. Yeah. God didn't save you not to keep you. Amen. But your walk, your growth, your obedience depend upon you choosing to obey God. That's right. yeah. Amen. It ain't automatic. Please, please. God ain't sitting there talking about, I sure wish they come to church. <laughs> God ain't sitting there in his throne talking about, oh, I wish they praised me. Come on. Why? Because he's given you all you need to praise him. Yeah. He's given you all you needed to be obedient. He's given you all you needed to say, yes, Lord, here I am. This is a, this is a product of me being pleasing yes, to you. All right. Amen. Amen. Glory, Amen. glory. Choosing to walk. Choosing to walk. Glory, 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 glory. Mm. Amen, amen, amen. The Apostle Paul in, in, in the text here, he says, listen, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is light because of righteousness. And he said, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, this is what the Lord says now. Now, even though your body is dead, amen, to its own emotions and sensibilities as a result of your yielding to the sovereignty of my spirit, when necessary, when needed, God said, I'll quicken your body in response to my obedience. In other words, if I tell you to go and you need to have strength to go, I'll quicken you in your mortal body to obey me. Amen. Woo, glory. Amen. He says, I'll quicken. Even though your body is dead, you're not seeking to do your thing. You're not seeking to walk contrary. He said, when the time is necessary and when the time is needed, I'll quicken you to obey me. Amen. Glory to God. You'll do right when everything in you tell you to do wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. You'll love when everything in you tell you to hate. He said, I'll quicken yes, your mortal body yeah. in obedience to my word. He says, so don't, don't you fear that you won't have the ability to please me. Yeah. I'll quicken, oh, glory to God, I'll quicken the ability to please me. Yeah. When all hell is breaking loose in your life yeah. and you'd rather give up than to praise me, I'll When the doctor says the bad report and you look to hold your head down as if there's no other hope, I'll quit giving you. Yes, Lord. Woo, glory. My presence to let you know it ain't over until I say it's over. That's when I quicken you. Lord, quicken you to obey me. Yes, sir. When you're tired and you're weak, glory to God, you're down to your last. It looks like it's over. By my spirit. Yeah. Even though you're tired. How many have drugged the church? Mm -hmm. Have 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 drugged to help their kids? Have drugged to the job? Have made their way there? Have made their way to another place? Have done what is right to do? And God has to quicken yes. your body. Mm. Glory. God. Yes, God. Ooh, glory. That's the kind of God we serve. Yeah. Hey, listen. He said, listen, I'm pleased with you. 
And because I'm pleased with you, I'll quicken in you yeah. your, your ability to be approved of me. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's not you, it's me. Glory, glory, glory. What? God, by his sovereign will, has deposited his spirit in us that the power of God enables, again, our mortal bodies. Yeah. Quickens us. Mm, quickens us. This allows the believer to walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Walk. It's, see, this, this ain't hallelujah, Holy Ghost. This is walking in the spirit, being, being refreshed and being enabled by the power of God. Yeah. Mm, he quickens me. I would have hated you, but God told me to love you. Yeah. That's what God will do. Amen. You ever feel like a fool for doing right? Yeah. When they deserve wrong, he said, I'll quicken in you your mortal bodies. Woo! So that you're pleasing the Almighty God. Woo! This is, that. This is walking in the spirit. And really, it's not mandatory, it's optional. Amen. Amen. It's a sovereign initiative for us to walk in the spirit. Not mandatory. Not mandatory because we can still resist what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. But God demands it. He said, this is my prop. This is my priority. This is my program. Yeah, it's mandatory to God, but many times we don't walk like that. Glory to God. Look at this now. Psalm says in Psalm 37 and 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, that's a hard scripture for folk. But it said, though he fall, if my steps are ordered by you, yes, yes, yes. how can I fall? Let me say this again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The steps of a good man come on, come on. are ordered by the Lord. Yes, it is. And he delighted in his way. Yeah. Now God is happy about him walking in his way. Yes, sir. It doesn't say I'm walking contrary. Psalms 37, 23. He said, though he fall. Mm -hmm. So there is an occasion mm -hmm. where there may be a time that I fall. It doesn't mean fall from grace. Mm -hmm. It means that I fail in some way. Yeah. So even though I'm walking in the spirit, yes, I'm still subject. Oh, God, help us today. I'm yeah. still subject yeah. to failure. Yeah. So stop putting folk on pedestals right. as if they'll never fail. All right. All right. People do that all the time. Yes. And I know some things are more grave than others. I know that. But all of us have, I heard our deacon say this morning, our issues. Uh -huh. And see, some of us have fallen and nobody knows it. Come on, That's right. come on, come on. And because God is yes, who he is, yes, yes. he has covered us. Uh -huh. Because if you knew it, you would think different about them. Yeah. 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 You, you wouldn't say, brother and sister. Oh, God uh -huh. bless you. You, you might not shake their hand anymore. Yeah. Mm. That's, right. That's right. That's right. You might see them differently. Right. Because many times we require more, the Pharisees did, require more of them that they taught mm -hmm. than them who were supposed to be the teachers. Yeah. They would try to put the harness around their necks and walk around with just a ribbon around their own. Because they felt that, listen, you are quite justified to do right. You should never do wrong if they themselves were in the wrong. Amen. So he said, though he fall, mm -hmm. he shall not be utterly cast down. I love this. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So even though God is holding me, if you didn't know it, you wouldn't know I was a failure. But he's holding me up like a rock. Oh, yes, sir. Look at this now, beloved. He's pulling me as if I haven't failed. Yeah. But though I fail, he's yet holding me. Because if every time you fail God, uh -huh. he drops you, My Lord. then you would be an insult to the fact that God is able to 
like you see me don't mean I ain't got a story. Amen. 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 But God says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Why? Because the Lord will uphold him with his hand. David said, listen, I have been young. Oh, I love David. Oh, you remember about David's Bathsheba. Get over it. Oh, yes, sir. Get over it. David was a man after God's own heart. How would your opinion change of David if you heard about David and Bathsheba before you heard about him being a man after God's own heart? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, he, he was with that. He was with that woman. But God says, I found me a man. Oh, yes, sir. After my own heart. But we wouldn't be able to see David until we had God to talk to Bashir. Yes. Oh, God help us. God help us. He said, listen, I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lended, and his seed is blessed. David said, I'm young, now I'm old, and I've never seen God give up on the righteous. Because God chooses to bless the righteous. Back to our text. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to do to live after the flesh. We are debtors not to choosing to walk is to know God not only in fellowship, amen, but with kinship we have been adopted. It's not only about our fellowship, it's about our adoption. We are family. The 15th verse says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption. We have been made family by him. Therefore we cry, Abba, Father. Woo, glory. Yes, sir. That's how good God did it for us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo, glory, 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 glory. God did it for us. Yes, sir. So that we be family. Hallelujah. Not just friends, we family. Glory. Yes, That's right. That's why we cry daddy. That's what our father means. We cry daddy. Yes. We cry daddy. Glory, 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 glory. We should assume a certain posture because we walk in the light. Amen. We should assume a per certain character because we walk after him. 1 John 2 and 6 says, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Don't tell me you don't know how he walked. If his spirit is in you and God is confirming it through his word, then you know how you ought to walk. He said, listen, you got me as an example. He said, walk. Psalms 119 and 105 says, Thy word is a lamp under my feet and a light unto my path. And choosing to walk is our belief as believers without seeing God. Glory. Yet we believe in God. We don't see him, but yet we believe in him. Yeah. God illuminates our walk. He allows us to see where we are going because we have yielded our wills to him. Amen. I don't know what's around the corner, but God sure lets me know something is. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I know there's a peace in my spirit that I'm, worried, I'm not worried about what's going to happen next because God gives me a peace in my spirit to let me know everything is going to be all right. Amen. And even going around the corner, uh -huh. it may look dark, it may look weary. Yeah. God said, listen, all you got to do is trust in me. First John picked it up and said, if we walk in the light mm -hmm. as he is in the light, we shall have fellowship with him. God said, listen, if you walk after me, you are walking in my light. God illuminates us by his word. And as his word illuminates us, he transforms us into his righteousness. In other words, righteousness really means right living. As I walk after him, and obey his word. Surrender my will. Surrender my life. It's not overnight. It's a process. Don't let nobody fool you like they've been saved from birth. They haven't. Let them understand this. That it's a process of growth. That as he grows me up in him, my life is transformed into the righteousness that he has purposed before the foundation of the world through my obedience. It's a choice, beloved. I choose to obey God. I choose to take him at his word. I choose to love him. I choose to believe. Amen. Ooh, choosing to walk, beloved. Amen. Choosing to walk. I'm choosing it. Psalms picked it up, 119, 1 and 30. says, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding 
unto the simple. Amen. As God gives us light, it illuminates the simple. I was simple. I don't know about you. You might not have been simple, but I was simple. Hey Amen. But God says that the entrance of his word yeah. gives light. It gives understanding or discernment to the simple. Simple-minded, simple-headed, it don't matter. If you were simple, you were simple. And it wasn't until God illuminated you by his word that you began to choose to walk in obedience to his word. What a shame if you know what to do and you don't do it. What a shame if you have all this illumination in front of you and yet reject to walk in the light and choose darkness over light. Mm. Glory to God. Choosing to walk the light. It's our choice. Amen. And God has made it simple in the sense that if we surrender ourselves to him, he's more than able to give us not only the light, but the strength to walk in it. Maybe there's someone this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. A little teaching this morning, but I love God's word.